Welcome to the future of legal THC, Mood's THCA flower. It's the most potent breakthrough in the world of federally legal cannabis. And now you have 10 high inducing strains of this smokable flower to choose from at hellomood.com, the best online dispensary that ships discreetly to your door. Great for beginner and veteran users, the experts at Mood have tailored different strains for curated moods. From euphoric and energized to creative and focused, Mood delivers the highest quality THC products you can trust. However you like to take THC, Mood enhances awe-inspiring experiences with versatile products that go with whatever mood you're ready for, like their great-tasting gummies, convenient pre-rolls, classic flower, and so much more. Try Mood's new THCA flower today. And for 20% off your first order, plus a free pre-roll of THCA flower, go to hellomood.com and use promo code PODCAST20. That's hellomood.com, promo code PODCAST20, for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre-roll. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to The Daily Red, your lunchtime catch up on all things Liverpool FC, your daily reminder that the Reds are top of the league and your coping mechanism in these troubled times. Um, not so troubled times in yesterday's game, though. A comfortable 5-2 win over Norwich. Uh, we played some really good football at times. Got goals from Curtis Jones, Darwin Nunes, Diogo Jota, Virgil van Dijk and Ryan Gravenberg. We got assists from James McConnell and two from Connor Bradley. We eased our way comfortably into the fifth round where we will have a home tie against lower league opposition, either Southampton or Watford. They have to play a replay. So that's all very positive. Trent is back. That's a positive. Dominic is back. That's a positive. And Andy Robertson is back. And that's a positive. So no negativity to come out of yesterday's game. And if what we saw from the crowd yesterday is what we can expect from the Anfield crowd in the remainder of the home games this season, that is going to play a massive factor in how this season turns out for us. If the Anfield crowd can get up for each and every game the way it did yesterday and honour the man who is leading the charge to deliver a plethora of silverware this season before he departs, that is going to play a massive, massive role. <clears throat> when Anfield is like that, and that's a Sunday lunchtime FA Cup against lower league opposition kind of game, and the atmosphere was great. If the, if the atmosphere is like that for the league games, for the European games, we are going to be in business. We already know we're in one final. We face Chelsea in the League Cup final. We're on course, potentially, for another Cup final in the FA Cup. Get through Southampton or, or, or Watford. And we're in the quarterfinals. And from there, you fancy our chances. Now, the quarterfinal draw has worked out so that all the top clubs have been kept apart almost as if they planned it that way. But I'm not a conspiracy theorist, only sometimes. Um, only a lot of the time, really. Um, the quarterfinal, we likely will end up with a tougher draw, but not necessarily a draw that we would not be strongly favoured to come through from. When you look at who's left, I don't really see, other than City, anyone that would hugely con um, concern us. Like, 
Blackburn or Wrexham will face Newcastle. You'd expect Newcastle to come through. We'll beat Newcastle home or away. Chelsea or Villa against Leeds or Plymouth. I think Villa beat Chelsea. I think Leeds will go to Plymouth and win. I think Villa obviously will come through from that fifth round game. Villa away would be very tough. Villa at home, you'd fancy us. Bournemouth or Leicester, we'll beat either of them. Bristol City or Nottingham Forest against Manchester United, you'd expect Forest to come through. I think United would go there and beat them. We would beat United in a fifth in a quarterfinal game. Wolves or Brighton, away to either, very very difficult. Home to either, you'd fancy us to be favourites and to go through. Sheffield Wednesday or Coventry against Maidstone, you'd fancy whichever team wins the Sheffield Wednesday Coventry replay and Coventry are at home. So you'd fancy Coventry. Um, You'd fancy Coventry to beat Maidstone. That would be, that's the draw that all the Premier League teams will want. And then Luton or City. City will almost certainly win that game. You'd fancy us to beat City at home, though. Away, it's very difficult. Neutral ground, I think we beat them. I do. Because our fans will travel in much better numbers than theirs. I think we're in great shape in the FA Cup. We know we're in great shape in the EFL Cup. Chelsea's no pushover by any stretch. They're not a good team. And we should beat them in that final. And then the Europa League... Like, I went over this with Carl earlier on Scouted, but just for those that haven't heard that yet, um, you've got sitting pretty ready for the next round that they'll play, which won't be till March. You've got West Ham, Brighton, Rangers, Atalanta, ourselves, Villarreal, Slavia Prague, or Bayer Leverkusen. Now, You'd have respect for West Ham and Brighton as Premier League opposition. Atalanta, they're a decent team, but it's not like they're pulling up any trees in Serie A this year. They're a distant fourth. They're 10 points behind third. And third aren't close to first or second. So you'd fancy us to comfortably overcome them. Villarreal... They're always a little bit difficult, but they're 14th in La Liga. It's, they're not a, a good team this year. Bayern Leverkusen are the one. They're the one that would provide the toughest test. Would be nice as well if we were the team that gave Xabi his first defeat on the season. But I think they'll probably have lost by the time that comes around. But Leverkusen... West Ham, Brighton, they're the only ones that... And and even West Ham and Brighton, over two legs, you'd very much fancy us to progress. Then you've got Feyenoord or Roma. This is the knockout round. The winner of that will play one of the winners. You'd fancy us to beat either of them. Milan or Rennes, you'd fancy us to beat either of them. Lons or Freiburg, you'd fancy us to beat either of them. Young Boys or Sporting, Again, you fancy us to beat either. Sporting would be interesting, though. Potentially an audition for Ruben Amram. Benfica or Toulouse will beat either of them. Braga or Quarabeg will beat either of them. Galatasaray or Sparta Prague? Galatasaray will be tough because going to Galatasaray is always going to be difficult. But we should beat either of them. And then Shakhtar Donetsk versus Marseille. We'll beat either of them. I mean, Shakhtar have been ravaged by players leaving as a result of the war. And Marseille are seventh in the French League. These are not teams that should be concerning us hugely. That competition, barring a major cock up on our our, our behalf, we should win. We should win. The FA Cup is more difficult. I think 
the Europa League and the League Cup should be the minimum we come out of this season with, as things currently stand. Now, obviously, injuries and that can change that. But as things currently stand, <clears throat> you look at the four competitions, you'd never take the league for granted because of City. You can't take the FA Cup for granted because of City. But the League Cup and the Europa League, we should win both of them. We should win both of them. Not could, should. We could win the league. We could win the FA Cup. We should win the other two. And look, if you offered me the cup treble now, I'd probably still take it. But I said this to Trev and Harry on Friday. This is the first time I actually believe we can win the league. I haven't believed it all season. I've always just felt like it's City's league to win or to lose, whichever way you look at it. But they're not quite right this year. Defensively, they don't look great. The midfield hasn't looked right without Gundogan. Obviously, they haven't had KDB. That's a huge one. They get Haaland back soon as well. They'll be formidable. They don't look quite the same. We're better than I expected us to be. And now that we're getting everybody back, you'd assume Mo will be back soon. Tiago was pictured in training. Now, he wasn't actually doing any running or anything. He was standing talking to Klopp. But he might be back soon. Besetic might be back soon. Costas will be back soon. So you're only really looking at Matip, who's going to be out for the season. If we could get everybody back. And with the news of Jürgen and with what that will do to the fans and the players and galvanise everybody, I do believe we can win the league this year. I do now believe we can win the league this year. Next two games are vital. We need to beat Chelsea and we need to avoid defeat at the Emirates. If we avoid defeat at the Emirates, then we're in great nick. But City are the ones. I, Arsenal, I don't worry about either way. Even if we lost at the Emirates, I, I wouldn't fancy them to finish above us. I still think we're just a better team. You go man by man, it, there's very few Arsenal players get into our team, um, if any, at the moment, on current form. I mean, Rice is the one people would point to over Curtis Jones at the moment on form? Mm, I don't think so. Rice hasn't been good in a while. Curtis has been great. Certainly, it's our back four. It's our goalkeeper. It's Dom- I think it's Dominic over, over Odegaard, personally, for how we play. Because the manager would be Klopp. No question. So you're picking a team for Klopp. And I think Dominic Alexis... And Curtis is the midfield he would go for. I think it's what suits what he wants to do. I mean, if he'd wanted Declan Rice, he would have tried to buy Declan Rice. He never made even the slightest attempt to buy Declan Rice. I know people will say, oh, well, he wanted to stay in London. Do you really think if City hadn't pulled out of that, that he wouldn't have gone to City? If City had just said, you know what, we're just going to, we're going to outbid Arsenal no matter what, he would have gone to City. He would have come to us if we'd bid the most money. We didn't want him. City didn't really want him in the end. They realised he he wasn't worth... They were happy to pay like 75 for a £55 million player. They weren't prepared to be stupid like Arsenal and pay 105. He started the season really well. He's been poor since the trip to Anfield. Endo just, you know, took away whatever was going on there. And their fans who've been lauding him as the best six in the world are now begging for Thomas Partey to come back in, which tells you all you need to know. So I think it will be our midfields. It will be Darwin, it will be Mo, Saka on the left side, maybe Martinelli. I mean, we, we have Jota. I'd probably take Saka and then have Jota as like a super sub. I, I probably would overall take Rice just for the athleticism, but... He wouldn't be the six I'd want us to have if I had my choice. Wouldn't even be in the top 10 because he's not a six. 
But we're just, so the point of all this is we're just a better team than ours. Man for man, we're a significantly better team. And they can point to any old nonsense about some group of nerds saying they have the most valuable squad. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. The reason their squad might be seen as more valuable than ours is because of the ages of Mo, Alex, uh, Mo, Allison, and Virgil, and the contract situation of Trent. But they don't have better players than us or anything close to it. Squad value is meaningless when it's done by these type of people. We have a much better squad than Arsenal. We've got better depth than them as well. They've got some good depth, but we've got better depth overall. We're just a better team than them. Are we a better team than City? We stack up pretty well. We really do stack up pretty well. I think I'd take Aki. Now, it's harsh on Joe, who's been brilliant this year, but Nathan Aki was the best left back in the league last year. I think I'd take him just as a natural left footer, but I'd want Ibu and Virgil. And it's undeniably Trent. It's undeniably Allison. It's definitely Rodri. And Haaland is definitely in. Mo is in. KDB is obviously in. I think Bernardo Silva is in. So I think it might be KDB... Rodri and Alexis in midfield and Mo and Bernardo either side of Haaland. So you've got Haaland, Bernardo, KDB, Rodri, Aki. I'd have five City players, but I'd have six of ours. And again, I think I'd lean towards our manager, but they've obviously got a, they, it's a coin toss. There's no wrong answer. There is no wrong answer. If you're basing it on what they've done, you, you probably give it to Pep. But either way, I think we have a slightly better team. Slightly. They have great depth, though. But then we have really good depth in certain parts of the team as well. It's very close. It's very, very close. That's why I think we have a chance to win the league this year, because it is very close. And the exciting thing for us is that we're not the finished product. They, they are. Like, this is the final version of Guardiola's City. They won the treble last year. They could win it again this year. They could. They're the, they're the finished article. Now, they're not his best ever team. The 17 to 19 team was better. But he's rebuilt it and he's rebuilt it into this. We're only rebuilding. We're still a couple of players short of of our finished article. If Jürgen was staying, you'd be looking at left-footed defender, six and left winger. If it's somebody else, then that will change depending on what they want to do. If it was Alonso or Amram who both played the 3-4-2-1, It's left-side centre-back, left-footed centre-back, that is. Left-footed, left-side centre-back, left wing-back, and one in midfield. And that's all either of them would need. That's actually pretty much all they would need for the entire squad, when you really think of it. uh, Tomorrow, I'll I'll do more on, on what I think the team would look like under those two, under De Zerbe. Because they seem to be the three. I don't think there's any real chance of Nagelsmann. I really don't. I know Thomas Tuchel has now announced he's leaving. I don't know if he's announced it, but it's been reported that he's leaving Bayern. He falls out with too many people. I think his personality would just go against the grain. I don't think he's a realistic option. Not now. Maybe, Maybe next in like seven or eight years when he sorts his head out and stops, you know, creeping around cities late at night looking for victims. Um, That's a joke about him being a serial killer, not anything 
not anything untoward towards like, you know, deviancy. Um, although so, I suppose being a serial killer might be might be deviancy. Um, uh, we'll talk more about them tomorrow and, and what the team might look like. There's going to be a bunch of podcasts this week as well. Uh, myself and Dave Davis are going to do one on managerial candidates, maybe look at some outside the box options as well. Um, would probably we'll probably do one on sporting directors as well. Um, I I I do have uh, a working list. I actually have two lists. I have the long list, which has about thirty six, thirty seven names on it. Many of whom won't ever get consideration and and shouldn't. It's just that they're interesting uh, to me. And then there's probably a list of about ten who could be realistic options. And then it might be none of them, because who knows? But uh, yeah, we'll do them uh, in the week, the next week or two. Um, there'll be a bunch more stuff as well. Obviously, there's a lot of focus to come on the upcoming games as well, which is the most important thing right now. Uh, do check out this is Anfield and Liverpool dot com. There's plenty of content on there for you to look at. But before you do that, make sure you go to anfieldindex.com and have a look at what the good folks are doing. So there's a piece about the Academy and the next generation. Uh, Jason McAteer pondering key player exits. I I don't know that Jason McAteer has ever pondered in his life. Um, Piece about the post-clop challenge. Piece about Van Dyke's future. Van Dyke gave an answer that was basically a don't ask me silly questions kind of answer. And people have made it out to be far more than it actually is. Um, there's also a piece about Tom Robinson, who's really, really good, and was on a recent podcast with Dave Davis talking about potential South American targets, players that we could go for. Uh, Luis Guilherme is one that came up in the conversation. Young Palmieri's winger, super talented. They have two immensely talented wingers there. Him and Estevao would be interested to see if we'll go for either of them. Obviously, we haven't dipped into the South American market under Jurgen. Um, I, I, I would be of the opinion that that is because of Jurgen, because he doesn't think they'll make the transition quickly enough um, and he'd rather see them prove themselves in a higher level league before bringing them in. Because obviously he's spoken about it before. He wants players that can make more of an instant impact. It's one of the reasons we went for the players we went for in the summer in terms of Endo, Alexis and Dominic, obviously. Gravenberg then was kind of the the gamble, the roll of the dice. Um uh, Podcast-wise on AnfieldIndex.com, there is post-match Raw after the Norwich game, which you can check out there. It is Trev, Carl, and Harry Setti. There's a new Liver Birds, which you should make sure to give a listen to. There is a monthly review Red Alert with Dave Davis, James McKean, and Mark Evans. Harry Setti has a new rival recon up. And... The Monday lunchtime pod, which I'm just going to stick with saying because I don't care about cry arsers. David Lynch joining Dave Davis for Media Matters uh, to talk about Norwich, to talk about the big week ahead, to talk about all things going on around the club. Make sure you give that one a listen. And there is a scouted for Chelsea, which we've done today. So do check that out as well. Um. Right, folks, that's going to do me for today. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it.
You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network. A hypothetical. If your neighbour buys Enlist One and Instinct Next Gen and you buy them with true choice, what's the difference? An extra five grand in your pocket? Don't miss out. Get up to 10% back with True Choice at Corteva.com slash save now. Hello, how's it going? My name is Ali. I'm a doctor turned entrepreneur and now the world's most followed productivity expert. And I'd like to introduce you to my brand new book, Feel Good Productivity, How to Do More of What Matters to You. The core message is that what if the secret to productivity isn't discipline and hard work and hustle? What if it's joy instead? If that sounds up your street, then Feel Good Productivity is now available everywhere that books are sold.